was a clever little thing. At last, they agreed to marry and dwell together in the same house and be very comfortable. One day during the summer, the cat said to his wife, My dear, we must take care to lay in a storm for the winter, or we shall die with hunger. You, little mousie, cannot venture to go about anywhere for fear you should be caught in a trap. But I had better go and see about that. This good advice was followed, and in a few days Tom came safely back with a large jar full of beautiful meat covered with fat, which he had found. They had a long talk about a place in which to hide this treasure. But at last, Tom said, I don't know a better place than the church. No one ever thinks of robbing a church. So if we place the jar under the altar and take care not to touch it, then we shall have plenty to eat in the winter. So the jar was carried to the church and put in a place of safety but it did not remain there long. Tom kept thinking about the contents of the jar and longing so much for a taste that at last he invented an excuse to get away from home. <clears throat> Mousy, he said one day, I have had an invitation from one of my cousins to be present at the christening of our little son who was born a few weeks ago. He has a beautiful kitten, she tells me, gray with black stripes, and my cousin wishes me to be the godfather. Oh yes, go by all means, replied the mouse. But when you are enjoying yourself, think of me and bring me a drop of the sweet red wine if you can. to do as she asked him, and went off as if to, he was going to see his cousin. But after all, it was not true. Tom had no cousin, nor had he been asked to be a godfather. No, he went right off to the church and slipped under the table where the jar of meat stood, and sat looking at it. <clears throat> he did not look for long. Presently, he went close up and began licking and licking the fat on the top of the jar, till it was nearly all gone. Then he took a walk on the roofs of the houses in the town, and at last he stretched himself out in the sun and stroked his whiskers as often as he thought of the delicious feast he had had. As soon as the evening closed in, he returned home. again, said the mouse. Have you spent a pleasant day? Yes, indeed, he replied. Everything passed off very well. And what name did they give the young kitten, she asked. Top off, said Tom, quite coolly. Top off, cried the mouse. That is a curious and uncommon name. Is it a family name? It is a very old name in our family, replied the cat, and it is not worse than thieves, and your an as your ancestors were called. Poor little Mousie made no reply, and for a while nothing more was said about Tom's cousins. But Tom could not forget about the jar of meat in the church, and the thought of it made him long so much that he was obliged to invent another tale of a christening. So he told the little mouse that a lady cat, his aunt, had invited him this time, and that the kitten was a great beauty, all black, excepting a white ring around its neck, so he could not refuse to be present. For one day, dear mousie, he added, you will do me this kindness, keep house at home all alone. 
concealed. This time he feasted so greedily that when he had finished, the jar was more than half empty. <coughs> Such a thing has not happened in our family for many years. So you will let me go, won't you? Top off and half gone are such curious names, Tom, replied the mouse. And they are enough to make one suspicious. <clears throat> oh, nonsense, said the cat. What can you know about names staying at home here all day long in your gray coat and soft fur? manner. When you told me you were 
mouse had all gone on its lips, and hardly had it come out, than the cat made a spring and seized the mouse and gobbled it up. Now, that's 